Okay, brilliant. It seems like the sound is good. Now, just bear with me one moment. I'm just going to bring up my desktop. Brilliant. So I, uh, oh, apologies, guys. You should be able to see my desktop now. Um, just bear with me one moment. I'm just going to set up a few, a few bits just so that I can uh, keep a track of any questions that are coming through. Just... Uh, Brilliant. Uh, great. So I'm, I'm assuming that you can all see um, my, oh, this is an Aussie, it happens to be an Aussie dollar chart, uh, an hourly chart. Just uh, double checking from FX Street Admin that they can see that. If they can uh, just double check, if they can just let me know quickly and then we'll get going. All right, so it seems like you can see this chart, which is good. Um, let's, uh, let's get going. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining. I'm not going to start with Aussie. I'm, I'm going to start with Euro. Let's be a bit, um, a bit standard. Uh, but that's because we are in quite an unusual um, position uh, right now uh, for, to, uh, for the start of the week. Obviously, we had yesterday. I happened to be out of the office yesterday. Uh, but obviously, we had the U.S. market closed. Uh, they weren't just closed today. They're closed from um, they're closed to, they're, they're closed uh, yesterday, but also today. Uh, futures are only open till I think 2:50 or 1:15 our time today. Um, so it's, it's going to be quite unusual um, day. There's going to be quite low volume. Uh, that's the first thing to tell you. Um, it's going to be fairly quiet, I would say, uh, over the next uh, few hours. Well, really, from kind of the next kind of maybe an hour to go um, till the end till the end of the session. And that leaves us a little bit directionless because remember, there's you know millions of people in the U.S. who can't trade right now, who can't get to work, they can't be trading. That takes out a lot of um, activity from the market, so um, we would expect a bit of an unusual day. Um, I, we would, you know, in, in this type of, type of environment, obviously that volume is, you know, people are a bit frightened to put on positions one way or the other. Um, but there has been some big macro data out. I'm just going to run through some of it quickly because I think it does, um, it, you know, it's going to be important, uh, ge well, generally, but also particularly in the current environment, um, because remember, you you know, there could, so we have, we've had some big events today. Uh, we had the Bank of Japan meeting. They increased their stimulus program by 11 trillion yen, which wasn't deemed large enough. It wasn't the big bazooka that some people had been expecting. Um, what does this all mean? Well, it largely meant that the yen didn't fall off a cliff as somebody expected. We didn't see dollar yen break above the 80 level. In fact, if anything, it pushed back. So we've seen dollar weakness. That has been the key thing. Yes, I remember we saw. Dollar Dollar strength. Dollar tends to strengthen on, uh, you know, these kind of events, uh, you know, uh, force majeure events like such as what we're seeing in the U.S. And because it's a safe haven, of course, and the most liquid currency. Um, so that's the main reason why there. Um, the other. Um, uh, however, we, we, we didn't see that today because of the Bank of Japan. So much expectation had been building that all of a sudden it's like, hang on a minute, the Bank of Japan aren't going to be the ones that um, you know, go above and beyond and go that extra mile to try and push up um, uh, dollar yen and get, get it kind of back trending towards that um, 80 mark. We had been looking for, for a more aggressive start to the Bank of Japan. Uh, we thought there was a chance they may do it because the data had been so weak. However, it wasn't to be. Uh, they, uh, they increased their asset purchases by about 11 trillion. Did, only five of that is actually for, um, only five of that is for, um, is, is JGB purchases. So it's going to have a very limited impact on the dollar yen, on the bond spread between the US and Japan. Those of you who have joined me before know that that's, that moves very closely with dollar yen. And we'll look at that closely. However, the reason why I'm bringing it up and bringing it up in detail is that this is it. That's the background. That's the context. What we're seeing today, we've seen a bit of a reaction to it. What we may see um, in the coming days when the U.S. get back online is a bit more of a reaction to it. So, uh, you know, people will have a delayed reaction to what's been going on, uh, largely because uh, the U.S. are out. Um, the, the Aussie, that's quite interesting. Had some very interesting comments from their governor early, earlier. Talk about, uh, you know, fantastically. Interesting. We're going to look at copper as well. I know that may be something that some of you don't trade, uh, but it's interesting from a trading standpoint for sure. From a technical standpoint, yes, but also from an overall fundamental standpoint, overall uh, risk uh, sentiment standpoint. Uh, and I'll go through that. But anyway, let's start with dollar yen first. Uh, probably doesn't help that I put up that euro chart throughout that spiel. I do apologise. But let's take a look. This is the hourly chart. As you can see, this is the reaction from oh. 
bear with me one moment. That's the reaction from the, uh, the Bank of Japan meeting. So, you know, all of a sudden, edging towards 80, uh, get, that, get that news out. We kind of were incredibly volatile, but ended up lower because essentially they did not deliver the goods. Now, we haven't, you know, fallen, we haven't, um, you know, fallen off a cliff in dollar yen at all. We've just convincingly backed away from that 80 level, back below the 79.50, currently trading around the 79.40 mark now. But where can we go next? That's always going to be the big key thing. Um, what we've seen in the past, I'm showing you the daily chart now, um, because um, I just want to go back through a little bit of the history of, of how dollar yen trades, because as you can see, it goes through big periods of basically trading in a range, and what you could argue is that right now, we're very much kind of in that range. Yes, we didn't quite get there, uh, but we're, we're still in, in a range, and, and this is, is important for a couple of reasons. Back in February, when we saw that huge move higher in dollar yen get all the way from like 76 up to 84, that was really on the back of the Bank of Japan being very aggressive with their asset purchase program, taking the market by complete surprise. And those of you who trade, do, trade dollar yen or trade any of the yen crosses will know the Bank of Japan occasionally gets very angry about the, um, about the, the level of the yen. And so they start to intervene, uh, which means that they start to sell the yen themselves because they've got lots of FX reserves because they're a big export country. Um, and they don't, it doesn't usually work. So, you know, the, the, the one thing that has worked for them in the past has been monetary policy or changes to monetary policy. And that's been a key driver of dollar yen or, or of the uptrend in dollar yen uh, in, in, in over, over this year, at, part, at times this year. So people have been expecting the same thing. However, once you use monetary policy to kind of move a currency, um, you really need to keep doing it and you need to keep uh, doing it in a very big way. So what we've seen, for example, in uh, in in, dollar, yeah, in in the dollar, for example, during QE3, we've seen you know the initial impact of QE1 and 2 was to weaken the dollar. QE3, we haven't quite had that weakening of the dollar that one would expect. So it goes to show that every time you use monetary policy um, as a way to maybe tra to manipulate your currency or as a, as a way to try and you know boost your economy that way, um, it's it's got kind of the law of diminishing returns. You keep you you keep having to to give more and more to it uh, or do more. And more stimulus to try and get the same effect and obviously what the what the Bank of Japan did last night just wasn't enough like by any uh, any any um, uh, by any uh, stretch of the um, uh, imagination they just didn't do enough 11 trillion yen they did 10 trillion a couple of months ago uh, you know it's not a big jump uh, you know it's one it's, it's an extra 10 percent well really what they need is kind of an extra 50 percent or an extra 100 percent some had expected so this is why it was such a big disappointment hence why we've fallen now if we just look at kind of levels um, that we're in um, looking just 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 looking at the chart just eyeballing it looking at support and resistance levels I mean obviously that kind of 80 level uh, between kind of 80 and 80, 50, 80, 60, huge level of, of, of resistance there. It looks like a double top. Um, you know, haven't been able to get above it since May, uh, for, you know, for six months now. Uh, this is all, um, this is all looking, you know, incredibly, um, it's, it started to look more like an, like a, a, a insurmountable hurdle if you see what I mean um, some people had expected it to us to get above there recently uh, we didn't obviously then there was last night uh, or sorry with that Bank of Japan meeting and we didn't either so um, you know starting to get a bit concerned now about that level and the fact that we've backed away from it yet again um, obviously very very good support lies around that 78.80 to 79 level that's a cluster of daily moving averages that should act as very good support but right now what, I, what the chart is showing me is that we're not anything different from, or we're not in any way different from uh, trading in a range. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, the, the, well, once the U.S. comes back in, and there may still be a bit of selling pressure, some of the disappointment from the Bank of Japan meeting may be played out over the next couple of days um, with people cutting maybe long dollar yen positions um, on the back of the fact that the Bank of Japan doesn't seem to be that um, doesn't seem to be that aggressive in their stance. That's going to be important. 
um, to see how that goes. However, I don't really see it getting. I don't really see a big move on the back of that. I think you know the bulk of thing. The bulk of the move has been done. But I think what it's just what it's just kind of um, reinforced is that that we are stuck in a bit of a. Um, we are stuck in stuck in a range. And the reason why is that the Bank of Japan aren't doing enough to, uh, you know, really weaken the yen. But equally, you know, on the on the other side of that, the U.S. economic data is fairly good. So even though there is QE3 in the U.S., we don't know how long that's going to be. Uh, we don't know necessarily whether or not they're going to be, um, you know, the, the um, whether, whether or not, you know, how long QE will last for. Um, can it be justified when economic data is better? We're going to have to wait for a lot of economic data prints. Obviously, you know, the next key event for this, for this cross is going to be payrolls. Now, if we see payrolls, very, very strong number for payrolls, we may go and retest that 8150, but we're going to need a very strong number. We're going to need a real decline in that unemployment rate. Remember, we got the decline last month, uh, for oh, the, the decline for September. Uh, that, that was when uh, the, um, the unemployment rate rose for rose or fell to 7.8 percent hadn't been expecting that we're going to need like you know a, a sharp decline for us to get above that 8180 level um, to really to really see us see us move there but do watch for that because that's going to be the next major event I remember payrolls uh, and the, the labor market report has such a huge impact on what the Fed does because remember they've kind of tied QE3 to the labor market very very closely the other thing uh, that we've been looking at is or the other thing that we will be looking at is, um, you know, how that affects yields, and as I said, that yield differential between dollar yen and um, and uh, and um, uh, and and, and pay, uh, sorry, the link between uh, the interest rate differential and dollar yen is very 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 tight so looking at anything that moves the interest rate differential really is the key now I've got a question uh, Peter asked did the Bank of Japan only announce stimulus at monthly meeting so we have to wait another month well yes I mean most central banks you'll find will only announce policy measures at their meetings that's why they have meetings unless there's a massive um, event you know we saw um, we saw interbank announcement or intermeeting announcements during things like the financial crisis right now we're not in a crisis like that um, so I would I would say very I, I would certainly say that we're not we wouldn't expect uh, the Bank of Japan to announce anything just randomly. Um, you know, can we expect more stimulus? Well, they have also announced a kind of funding for lending program, which is something quite similar to what the Bank of England has done. Um, and, and what that has... Um, um, what that has... Um, meant is that... Or what that means, essentially, is that... Um, that or what it could mean is that the bank actually... Um, Get, uh, it is essentially paying banks, really, or trying to bribe them uh, to lend to the wider community to get growth going that way. Um, now, what we could see is uh, the bank of the the. Um, the Bank of Japan decide to wait to see the effects of that. And we know from the Bank of England, it probably takes about four or five months really for that to just start trickling through. So that could put them off doing more stimulus. However, as I mentioned before, Peter, when, we, um, when, when you start using your monetary policy as a way to you know, move the currency, that can, that, 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 as I said, it's got the law of diminishing returns. You know, If they did it this month and they need to do it next month, they did 11 trillion this month, they're going to have to do 16, 17, maybe 20 trillion next month to have like, you know, any impact whatsoever. Whatsoever. And it's a bad cycle to get into. And the Bank of Japan have done a lot of stimulus. They've already done 91 trillion worth of stimulus now. How much more can you do? Um, especially because the economy is not getting any better and it's not taking Japan out of, out of, um, out, out of deflation. So that, that's kind of the key thing there. Now, I know I've spent a lot of time on, on dollar yen. I just want to show you as well euro yen. Euro yen has been a bit more supported. Uh, but it still has it still has fallen back. This is the daily chart. Some very good support levels there at 101.50. We're currently just below 103. So again, in a we're, we're in a bit of bit more of a rate. We're, you know, we, we seem to have a top there. Um, but right now, this just looks like quite a normal a normal pullback, really. Um, you know, as I said, some very good support levels. But just go through one moment. I'm just going to. Um, And here, uh, you know, euro has been willing to, to rally quite strongly on the back of yen weakness. Dollar yen has been running into much more um, resistance. The reason why is that obviously, number one, uh, reduced credit risk causes something like a big, uh, a big, um, you know, risk sensitive trade like euro yen to uh, to, to um, you know reverse course and for the euro to rally very very strongly. Um, the other thing is, uh, or the other thing that we would say is. Um, 
uh, the other, sorry, the other thing that we would say is that um, the uh, the other thing that we would say is that you know euro has been uh, you know this, this pair is, is still technically in uptrend. Now we are approaching a, pro, a fairly pivotal level. There's 102.30 bottom of the the channel support there. As you can see, if we get below there, then we may dip further to walk back towards that 100 mark. Uh, but we still look like we're you know we're fa fairly supportive. We still that that nine that 102.60 or 102 sorry 30 level does seem to be holding fairly good as support. But it is what, certainly one to watch because if we do fall below that channel. Line, and then we may, uh, you know, we, we may fall back to 101.50, and then potentially back to parity, where there's a lot of support. So uh, definitely worth watching that one there. Now, as I said, I also want to talk about euro dollar. Euro dollar has been one of the beneficiaries from that weaker dollar yen. Pretty much, about, pretty much uh, ignored that weaker uh, German unemployment data. Uh, the German unemployment figure rose by 20,000 in October. The market had been expecting only 10,000 increase in, un in the unemployed, and that caused the unemployment rate to go up to 6.9% from 6.8% for, for this month. Obviously not a huge number. It's still much lower than, than their Eurozone peers, uh, but it's moving in the wrong direction. Uh, however, you know, we have seen such a good improvement. One month's data certainly doesn't reverse that. Uh, but, but just means you know keep an extra eye on Japan, on, on Germany um, it's not been having the most fantastic uh, run of, run of data recently so uh, so certainly worth, worth watching just looking at the euro dollar chart again very much stuck in a range we do seem to be range bound over the last um, few months I know some people don't like trading ranges however I like them because you kind of know what to do um, you know, they give you level at buy sell levels on a plate, essentially, because if you can see here, this 101.50 to 70 level, massive, it is completely our, uh, you know, resistance level du jour, and you've actually got your 200-day moving average there at 128.75 as your support level. Well, right now we're in the middle of that. Um, we have been, we had fallen below 129 in uh, in in early this morning in euro dollar, uh, but we did bounce from that level, which just again reinforces that support level. Remember that is a third, that's kind of a third time bounce from there. Um, obviously, we we would certainly wouldn't expect us to be um, you know trading in a range for too long, and as the range narrows, you actually increase the chance of kind of busting out of the range one way or the other. Uh, right now, we say that it's balanced whether or not we bounce to the upside and the downside, and that is because a lot of it will depend on what Spain does whether or not it applies for a bailout, uh, whether or not we see bond yields rising again. Right now, bond yields are, are fairly supported around about that 5.65%, and that's not panic zone. So, so that kind of justifies where we are trading in euro dollar at the moment. And um, the one thing, you know, we would point out, you know, momentum slightly on the downside. Uh, obviously, we've got kind of a, you know, a, a fall there, and we, that mirrors what the MACD is doing. Looking at it just from a slightly shorter time frame, we've turned back higher again. You know, as I said, we had that kind of recovery this morning after dipping back to that resistance, that support zone. So again, it just kind of reinforces where the, you know, what the, um, what the support says. Oh, someone's just asked a great question. What are your EMAs? Mine are actually S. Oh, they are EMAs. Sorry, no, you're right. Uh, exponential moving averages. Uh, red is 200. Yellow is 100. Green is 55. And blue is 21. Now, that, that runs across all the same. So it's this color-coded system. Basically, the most important ones, well, they're all important, but, you know, the red one, very important. The blue one, very important because it's a short term. So red long term, blue short term. Um, and the reason why I use them is largely because that's how I've been... Um, that's what I, how I was kind of taught when I first started working in FX um, a few year, a good few years ago, um, and, and they've kind of stuck with me. They're also very popular ones for the market. So things like EMAs, you want to use ones that the market look at, um, so that you know kind of where the crowd is going. So, so you know, hence why 128.75, like in the daily chart. Oh, here, let me show you. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to look at that one because it, to me that's going to be important. You know, that's going to be where we are. Um, you know, potentially where where we are um, going to go going forward. Um, and just this is a very, very short term chart. Obviously, that move towards 129.50. In the short term, that is becoming quite sticky. We are starting to look a little bit over uh, bought here now. So, just in the short term, anyway, we may struggle between kind of 129.30, 129.60. Um, that, that's kind of the levels there. But right now, it does seem like, you know, momentum's on, on the side. We may have a retest of 130. Um, you know, as, as I said, like, you know, certainly within the range, whenever we get back below that 128.7 or 129 level, we do seem to move higher, we do, we do seem to bounce off that level and, 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 uh, and kind of extend um, gains going forward. So, you know, that, that is um, 
that's uh, you know that's real range trading activity. It's you know we're we're in a range because central banks have depressed volatility essentially, um, and when you do when when you do that, you've got to change your trading style. You can't always start looking for trends. You've got to narrow down your time frame because remember, for a daily trader, it looks like we're in a range. If you become like you know an intraday or an hourly trader, actually there's lots of many trends you can jump on the back of. Now obviously, if we can get just above this 200-day moving average at 129.65, acting as very tough resistance right now, we might be able to make it back to that 130.50 level. So get above that 130 level. And that would be a bullish development for this pair, certainly in the short term. Obviously, 130, a big psychological number. But also, you know, we, we kind of declined off, we kind of declined off there. And what, what you tend to see is that once you get above 130, as you saw kind of back here on the 15th of October, you do tend to extend gains. Then it does it does stoke a bit of interest, largely maybe through algos, through people triggering, uh, you know, buying systems, um, and that that's quite important. Now the other thing I want to show you as well is CAD. Dollar CAD has done fantastically well um, on the back of weaker commodity prices, some dovish commentary from the Bank of, from the bank of Canada, etc. Um, oh, someone's just asked, do you think, uh, this is uh, from, to, from Philip, do you think Greece will have an impact on euro dollar? Well, you know what Greece has in the past? It still hasn't got its, its next tranche of bailout funds. However, we do think it will get its next tranche of bailout funds. The Samaras government has much better relations with Brussels, and that's going to be a good thing for them. So, um, yes, it could. It could if it, you know, if, if we see big riots. You know, the trigger points for this would be big riots. Um, a surprise, now it would be a surprise if they didn't get there. 30 billion bailout next bailout tranche bailout payment and that would be a big surprise so we would uh, watch out for that and also I think generally if we see if we see stress elsewhere so for example if we see stress in Spain um, you know that the Greece will be um, dragged into that so yes euro dollar could move on the back of just Greece alone but you know right now you know us and a lot of other people think that Spain is a bigger issue and one thing that we've we, you know we've done in the past is that you think the bigger countries become a bigger issue in Europe um, and they don't, you know, it always comes back to Greece again, a bit like the French elections. What was more worrying? It wasn't the French election and a socialist prime president coming in. It was, uh, you know, the, um, the Greek elections in June. Um, so don't write off Greece ever. It's good to definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, but we would certainly expect in the next, uh, probably by, over the next week for, for um, Greece to get its next tranche of bill up funds. So that's key to watch. Let's take a look at CAD, as you can see, back above parity. Um, it's been a bit sticky around parity. And not starting, not looking overbought, though, in any way, shape, or form, so there could be further to go. Uh, it seems more like a fundamental shift now in uh, in 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 dollar uh, dollar CAD, um, and the reason why is that you know once we got to that 97 low uh, that we saw just kind of a month ago, um, it was you know not only did that mark, mark a low in um, you know kind of overall risk or a high risk appetite um, or a low in the dollar, uh, it also marked when the Bank of Canada started getting pretty dovish. Um, so we're up there, we're above the 200-day moving average. That is pretty significant move uh, that's just below parity there at 99.70 so what we could do is make a bit of a meal out of this parity move um, however you know we, we do seem to be on the way for slightly more gains I mean you know momentum indicators seem to be on the side of further uptrend um, it's not a perfect uptrend by any means there's a lot of support on the way down um, oh let me just draw that for you. You know, it's not the perfect uptrend, that's for sure. Um, especially not when you draw it like that. Bear with me. There we go. Uh, but we are getting this close to this kind of mini um, uptrend resistance here at 101.20-ish thereabouts. Now, we have backed away from there today, but if we do get above there, it really opens the way for a much more prolonged move to, like, you know, basically back to kind of that 103 level or 102 or these highs here. That's not my horizontal line, but I'll try and make it work. Uh, that kind of 102, 20 level, around about the 102. So, you know, uh, you know, getting above that 200-day moving average does suggest a bit of a new. Um, Um, to that level. Uh, someone just mentioned a story which I haven't actually read about. Um, I've, as I mentioned, I was away at the weekend and yesterday. So why did the Gre why did Greece risk journalists at least 2000? I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about, but um, I guess maybe this isn't the best forum to be discussing it. Um, I would say there's going to be plenty written in the press about, about uh, you know, different conspiracy theories and, and what the Greeks are doing and, and how things are changing over there. 
and what it means to be more in, interested in that. But um, let's concentrate just on dollar CAD for this moment because this is getting to quite a pivotal level, really. You know, for those of you who maybe missed the first move, this could be a fairly good entry point if you can get above 101.20. Just for you kind of short to medium term traders that maybe want just kind of 200 pip rally, uh, obviously always recommend uh, good risk risk reward ratios. Uh, but that that's why you look for these kind of support levels or these key resistance levels to be able to jump on the back of a trend that seems to already be, have started and you're a bit concerned that you've missed it. Always get in at better levels or always get in above big key resistance levels whereby we could uh, move higher, especially if we don't start, if we don't look overbought like we don't at the moment. Uh, Aussie yen was the dollar, well, oh, sorry, Aussie dollar was one that I wanted to show you as well. Oh, that's not going to be Aussie dollar. Um, and the reason why is that obviously we had some uh, fairly uh, dovish commentary actually coming from uh, RBA Deputy Governor Lowe. Um, the reason why is that he mentioned things like intervention. He said that they wouldn't rule it out, but it would have to have quite a th high threshold. And then in the same hand, he mentioned the fact that he doesn't think that the Aussie is fundamentally overvalued. So, uh, you know, he's really couching his comments there. But I think really the key is if we were to see another move towards, you know, above 106, so above those highs from August and September this year, then we may Jump, then we may see uh, you know some type of intervention coming in now not where we are now um, and obviously the you know the, the governor's speech was very well crafted um, because of where you know because of what he said you know the fact that it's not overvalued the fact that they may do something uh, that's kind of the key thing now someone said can we um, uh, short Aussie now well I mean that, that depends on, on your view of course uh, you know that's uh, that would depend on your trading style what you've been looking at what your target is etc etc um, but in terms of what the levels and what the charts are saying to us um, you know we do you know we have been a, we, we seem to be in a bit of a, a kind of a continuation pattern here um, now if we do break above this kind of 105 Four level 104.05 um, level, then we could definitely make it back to 106. But if we don't, um, and we decline through 103. 103.30 um, then it would, could potentially see us going back to 101. Now we actually think that you know again we could range trade really into the end of the year kind of between that 101 level it seems quite happy above parity Aussie dollar and this 106 level I mean that's where we see us and right now we're smack bang in the middle of that so we could go one way or the other. Obviously the comments from, from the, um, from the uh, RBA governor were what I thought you know on balance fairly bullish but however they, they didn't relate to anything about how it trades now uh, um, even though he did sound pretty confident that exports would bounce back, um, you know, who knows why he was saying that? We have yet to see that happen. Um, but it, but it's all about kind of what's going on in the future. So he was considered quite, um, quite David, quite uh, bullish, really, in his in his speech about growth. So um, I think that his comments just really. Uh, support more range trading. I, I don't see us breaking out one way or the other unless we get kind of a spike higher in volatility. Uh, someone just said dollar CAD, is it a buy and dips now? Uh, we have to wait for a pullback. I would say yes, either wait for a pullback or you could wait till we get to that we got to that level that I mentioned around and about oh just bear with me, let me just pull up that other chart. You certainly don't want to, you know, when, when things are in trends and, and you worry that you may have missed the trend, uh, you need to wait to get in at better levels, really. That's kind of the key thing. And so it's all about looking for those better levels. Oh. So as you can see, you may want to decide to get above it once you get above 104, 108.40. That's key resistance level. If you get above there, then it really could extend gain. So you may rather, rather than kind of buy now, and the risk is we may fall a bit, maybe wait until we get over that big level so that really that could then, you know, get some, get, get a, um, get some more going, get some more kind of, you know, oomph behind the move. However, if we, you know, buy, you know, people may decide to wait till kind of a pullback around about that 98.70 level, the 200-day moving average, if you think that's going to hold quite nicely, or, or even potentially down to that kind of 99.30 level, if you continue to think that there's going to be some adjustment going on. Uh, we do, you know, there's a lot, there was a lot of long card positions out there. There could be further adjustment going forward, um, especially because commodity currencies have been hit hard and, and the CAD seems to, you know, be, be taken taking the brunt of that right now. Okay, um, I'm going to let you guys go because it's 10.30. Uh, I'm happy to take one more question though if you have one. As I mentioned, happy to take one more question. 
Um, Uh, one more market-related question, if anyone has one, but if not, don't worry. Um, as I said, you know, generally quite a, um, you know, generally quite a quiet day, we think. Um, low volatility. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, the U.S. will be coming in, you know, probably in the next couple of days, trying to digest what are going on, what's going on, and that could cause some more... Um, Yeah, that that could cause some other things. Um, okay, some uh, dollar yen is it still bullish? Um, well, less so now because obviously we've had the Bank of Japan. So I would say medium term, yes. I mean, you know, we're fairly constructive on it, but in the short term, no. Someone's mentioned gold as well. I'll quickly look at gold for you, and that'd be the last thing that I look at. Gold again, very much been moving with overall risk sentiment, as you can see here. We have bounced off that 1700 level, but we still look fairly weak. We're trading in a very, very tight range, unusual for gold, uh, but that's because there's, you know, we, we haven't got too much volatility, not too much is going on. Um, right now, we are getting close to some very good support levels. The fact that we've bounced off or that we've managed to hold 1700 as support does suggest that that 1685, that 200 day moving average, is going to act as very, very good support. So, um, um, so that's a key thing. Someone's just asked, will the storm have a positive or negative effect? As I mentioned earlier, you know, in terms of, I, we don't think that it's a big enough storm to have a positive effect on gold. People aren't going to be buying that as a safe haven. Um, you know, we, if anything, we think it's a neutral impact. We don't, we don't really see gold. We don't see it as having any impact on gold at at all. In fact, if anything, gold is kind of almost treading water. Um, it's going to have a big impact on what goes on with payrolls on Friday. That's going to be the big thing to watch out for. 1:30 our time. Uh, sorry, 12:30 our time, and uh, not 1:30. Um, so that's kind of the key thing to watch out for now. Uh, payrolls. Will it suggest that more that QE will be cut short? If it does, then we could see a decline through 1680 back towards the 1600 mark in gold. Because Remember, gold has been your ultimate QE trade. Okay, guys, I hope that has uh, that answered your question. Uh, do watch out for those payrolls on Friday. Do, uh, if you are in the U.S., uh, look after yourselves. And uh, good luck trading this week. So uh, thank you very much for joining.